Why did a Russian truck, famous for its reliability and toughness, take such an unexpected turn in its design? The GAZ-63, a truck that ruled the roads and conquered the harshest terrains, hides a secret that will surprise you. Why were the wheels of this engineering beast flipped around? What you're about to discover will change the way you see this truck forever. The story of the GAZ-63 begins much earlier than most people think. Although it was mass-produced in the post-war years, its roots go back to the years before World War II. In 1938, the Soviet Union had already understood the need for heavy-duty off-road trucks, and design work began. The first prototypes, built in 1939 and 1940, aim to revolutionize military mobility in difficult terrain. But the outbreak of war cut these plans short. With the enemy at the gates, mass production of prototypes was halted. It wasn't until 1943, when the front lines offered some breathing room, that Soviet engineers resumed the project. This time, they didn't start from scratch. They incorporated key lessons from American trucks and Jeeps supplied through the Lend-Lease program. Ford, Dodge, and Studebaker left a deep mark on the conception of the GAS-63, especially in its more modern and functional cab. Thanks to its robustness, the GAZ-63 found applications in every sphere of Soviet life. It wasn't just a military vehicle. It was the muscle that powered industry, agriculture, and construction. Its ability to overcome obstacles gave it a clear advantage over the three-axle Studebaker, revered in its time, and even over its American cousin, the Chevrolet G7107, which, despite its popularity, couldn't match the Soviet truck's toughness. Domestically, there was no real rival. Other locally made trucks paled in comparison when it came to performance and reliability. That said, even the GAZ-63 had its Achilles heel, stability. With a relatively narrow track width and a high center of gravity, resulting from its design for maximum ground clearance, the truck was prone to rollovers if corners were taken too quickly or carelessly. On rural roads or improvised tracks, this posed a constant risk. Concerned about this issue, the Soviet military didn't sit idly by. Starting in the early 1950s, they pressured the GAZ factory, then known as the Molotov plant, to find a solution that wouldn't disrupt production or increase costs. In 1954, the experimental GAZ-63B and GAZ-63A models appeared. Both sought to address the root of the problem lowering the center of gravity and widening the track. Lower chassis rails were designed, and the front axle was widened by 75 mm. In theory, this should have increased the critical rollover angle by 3 degrees, a significant improvement in stability. However, real-world testing revealed a harsh truth. The changes didn't bring any meaningful improvement the prototypes behaved almost the same as the base model, and the rollover risk persisted. Accepting this modernization would have meant introducing costly variations into the GAZ-51 production line, the GAZ-63 sibling, which was considered inefficient and impractical. In the end, the project was scrapped in favor of focusing on an entirely new design, the GAZ-66, a truck that would mark a new generation of Soviet off-roaders. So, what to do with the thousands of GAZ-63 still roaring across Soviet roads? The answer came in more pragmatic, partial solutions. For special models such as buses and modified transports, the GAZ-63M chassis was introduced, using smaller 20-inch wheels, a fix that, while not perfect, reduced rollover tendencies. In civilian use, improvised modifications appeared, fitting dual 20-inch wheels from the GAZ-51A on the rear axle combined with 18-inch wheels up front in a homemade attempt to improve stability. Of course, in the military, such improvised fixes weren't acceptable. 
the Ministry of Defense opted for a more systematic solution. In 1959, official trials were conducted by flipping the wheels, mounting them in reverse to alter the track geometry. Three scenarios were tested. No changes, all wheels flipped, and only the rear wheels flipped. The results were promising. Flipping all wheels increased the rollover angle by 5, five degrees, and flipping only the rear wheels raised it by 2.5 degrees, nearly matching the experimental GAS 63B models. However, this clever solution was not perfect. Flipping the wheels widened the track by 300 millimeters, which caused the front wheels to hit the fenders and the rear wheels to strike the cargo platform on uneven terrain. On top of that, the extra stress on the axles put their structural integrity at risk. Even so, on dry roads or firm dirt tracks, flipping only the rear wheels was considered an acceptable solution, and it was adopted on many vehicles still in active service. And so, the GAZ-63, with all its strengths and flaws, continued to leave its mark on the roads, fields, and work sites of the Soviet Union. The Legacy of Gaz and the Gaz 63 Today Today, the legacy of the Gaz 63 and the Gaz factory still lives on, though in a different form. Back in its time, the Gaz 63 was more than just another truck. It was a symbol of resilience, ingenuity, and adaptability in hard times. Its impact on off-road vehicle design was so deep that many of its technical solutions became the foundation for later military and civilian trucks not only in the Soviet Union, but across the Eastern Bloc. The sturdy chassis, the simple yet efficient all-wheel drive system, and the philosophy of built to last became permanent values. The GAZ brand, founded in 1932, still exists today and operates under the name GAZ Group adapting to modern times. While it no longer produces trucks like the 63, the experience gathered over decades continues to shine through in its current lineup of commercial vehicles and modern buses. Around the world, enthusiasts are still restoring and keeping old Gazi 63s alive, not just because of their rarity, but because they embody a mindset building machines capable of surviving the harshest imaginable conditions. Even now, at historic vehicle events or classic truck trial competitions, you can spot a GIZ-63 charging through mud, rocks, and steep slopes, as if time had never passed. The GIZ-63 was not just a machine, it was, and still is, a testament to an era when durability and functionality were the ultimate virtues of engineering. A Peculiar Case Linked to the GAZ-63 Speaking of curious stories, there's one case that perfectly illustrates the almost mythical toughness of the GAZ-63. In the late 1970s, in a remote mountainous region of the Caucasus, an old Gazi 63 assigned to a forest rescue detachment got trapped after a landslide. The road literally disappeared under its wheels. Instead of abandoning the truck, the local rescuers decided to use it as an improvised shelter. For more than three months, while waiting to be rescued, they lived inside the truck. They lit small fires near the cab, cooked and slept there, exposed to the harsh winter conditions. When the GIAZ 63 was finally pulled out of its frozen mud trap, soldiers and mechanics assumed the vehicle would be completely ruined. Yet with just a few minor adjustments, the engine roared back to life with its signature heavy growl, and the truck rolled back down the mountain as if it had only endured another routine test in its long service. From then on, that vehicle was nicknamed the Invincible by the Brigade, and its story is still told at veteran gatherings in the region. If you've been fascinated by the story of the GAZ-63 and you're passionate about the world of trucks, you'll definitely love what's coming next. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss any videos about these giants of the road.